The surface of the slime pool closes over Jason Solo like lips, warm as blood. He does not feel it. Knotted ropes of tentacles stretch wide his arms, bind close his legs, circle garrot tight his throat. Their coarsely scaled hide rasps blood through his skin, blood that trails him in a fractal tree spiral gelled motionless in the slime. Tentacles twist him and turn him and bend him, pulling him deeper through the slime that fluoresces yellow gold and scarlet around him, blazing colors that shift with his motion and surge from contact with the heat of his body. He does not see them. At the deepest depths of the slime pool, the tentacles hold him face up, his back to a ring of jagged rubble. That ring of rubble once had been the base of the chief of state's podium from which his mother had so often declaimed. The tentacles gather him in, gather him up, toward a body vast and billowing, black curves of flesh bulging between translucent green sheets and ropes of viscera. The tentacles spring from a fleshy ring around a mouth gaping and hungry, and from either side of that emptily chewing moss stare immense eyes that glow yellow with suspicious malice. Jason does not notice. His attention is filled with the hollow in his chest. His empty center rings with anger and mistrust and hungry triumph, the emotions of the world brain which has caught the former friend who tried to murder it. The former friend it had trusted and by whom it had been betrayed. Mobile teeth like swords protrude from humps of muscle like multiple tongues and begin to circle and clash within the tentacle-ringed mouth. Jason can answer only with regret and sadness. Yes, I betrayed you. I taught you to trust, and I taught you what it means to trust a traitor. He cannot teach it forgiveness. He has not learned that lesson yet himself. There is too much he will never forgive. The tentacles contract, drawing him into the gaping maw, and the sword teeth close upon his flesh. He does not recoil in fear. He does not resist. He does not struggle. Instead, he opens himself. In his most secret center, that gap in his being that once fed him pain, he offers an embrace. Into the hollow in his center he pours compassion, absolute empathy, perfect understanding. He accepts the pain he caused the Duryam with his betrayal. He shares with the Duryam the pain that betrayal had caused him. He shares with the Duryam all his experience with the spectrum of life, the featureless whiteout of agony, the red tide of rage, the black hole of despair, the gamma sleet of loss and the lush verdure of growing things, the grays of stone and duracrete, the glistening of gemstones and transparent steel, the blue-white sizzle of the noonday sun and its exact echo in a lightsaber's blade. He shares how much he loves it all, for all these things are all one thing, pain and joy, loss and reunion, life and death. To love any is to love all, for none can exist without every other. The universe, the force, all is one. The Yuzhan Vong and the species of the New Republic, Jason and the world brain. When I betrayed you, I betrayed myself. When I killed your siblings, I killed pieces of myself. You may kill me, but I will live on in you. We are one. And Jason cannot tell if those words come from him to the world brain, or from the world brain to him, for Jason and the world brain are only different faces of the same thing. Call it the universe, or the force, or existence. Those are only words. They are half-truths. Less. They are lies. The truth is always greater than the words we use to describe it. The skirl of light played along Amphistaff, a thrusting bind that sizzles disintegrating energy through the web of skin between a Yuzhan Vong thumb and forefinger where hand meets Amphistaff. A world whirl of airborne somersault over the heads of two warriors, lunging side by side, and their boneless collapse as a single lightsaber slash opens the napes of two necks and unstrings their limbs. The astonished blink of a warrior's eyes as an amethyst shaft of energy spears into his open mouth, angling upward to burn open a three-centimeter-wide tunnel from his hard palate through the roof of his skull. Of such brief flickers is built the death of Ganner Isode. Burned milk reek of Yuzhan Vong blood sizzling into smoke on his blade. Lines of burning ice that are the slices left in his flesh by amphistaffs. Cold flame of amphistaff venom consuming his nerves. These are mere flicks of melody in Ganner's symphony of the Force. The Force does more than give him strength, more than lift him, spin him. The Force surges through his veins to tune his heart to the rhythm of the universe. He has become the Force, and the Force has become him. He is not directly aware of the sequence of his death. Time vanished along with fear and doubt and pain in that eternal second when he surrendered his self-command. Standing in the archway waiting for the Yuzhan Vong, Ganna realized that this right now, right here, was what his whole life had been for. 
The day of his birth set his feet upon this path. Every triumph and tragedy, every foolish stunt and humiliation, each random useless twist of cruel fate built a pressure within him, piled up in tidal surge behind the dikes of his control. Those dikes had been built by his parents, trying to smooth the rough edges of his arrogance. They had been built by the mocking laughter of his playmates when they jeered his every attempt to impress them. They had been built even by Luke Skywalker's Jedi training. A Jedi doesn't show off, Ganner. Fighting is not a game. For the Jedi, combat is failure. It is a tragedy. When blood must be shed, a Jedi does so quickly, surgically, with solemn reverence, with grief. Ganner tried for so long, tried so hard to be what everyone told him he was supposed to be, tried to control his flair for the dramatic, for the elegant, the graceful, the artistic, tried to be a good son, a good friend, a humble man, a good Jedi. But in the archway he finds the end of trying. There is reason no longer to resist the truth of himself. Play-acting the hero's part is not only permissible, it is necessary. To hold the archway... It is not enough to merely wound and kill, it is not enough to be calm and surgical and grieving. To hold the archway he must not only slaughter, but slaughter effortlessly, carelessly, laughingly, joyfully. To hold the archway he must dance and whirl and leap and spin, calling out for more opponents, more victims. He must make them hesitate to face him. He must make them fear. He had spoken the words. He had found a magical incantation to crack the dikes within him and unleash the flood. None shall pass. He wields the blade of a fallen hero, but now he is the hero, and it is others who fall. He is rising. The force thunders through him, and he thunders through the force, letting slip the bonds of control, leaving aside conscious thought, answering only the surge of his passion and his joy. He finds power undreamed of. He has become the battle. He is not directly aware of the corpses that litter the tunnel, that his feet nimbly avoid of their own accord. He is not directly aware of the warped sheets of durasteel that he has drawn from the wreckage of the great door, sheets that spin and tumble around him to become anvils for the hammer of thud bugs and shields to shelter his flanks. He is not directly aware of the coral-embedded statues from the atrium that he has caught in his force-powered dance, immense figures of the species of the New Republic that seem to come to life to fight in his cause. Statues that lumber and rock and fall, crushing dozens and hundreds, remaking atrium into abattoir. No more is he aware of the texture of the coral that lines the walls, or the quality of the light, or the number of his opponents. Has he faced a dozen? A hundred? How many have been pulled back to safety after taking disabling wounds? How many lie dead in the brimstone smoke? He doesn't remember, for there is no memory. There is no past. There is no future. He is not even aware of himself, nor of the Yuzhan Vong. He has become the warriors he fights, slaying himself with each who falls. There is no longer any such thing as a Ganner Rysod. There are no more Yuzhan Vong, no more Jedi. There are only the dancers and the dance. The dance is all there is. From whirl of quarks to wheel of galaxies, all is motion. All is dance. All is 